Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice equation with complex numbers. Wait a minute, is that an equation? What is the unknown? I? No. I is a constant. Theta is the unknown. So we're going to be solving for theta values, not for z. What is z? z is a complex number. Uh, z can be written as a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the square root of negative 1. I explain all of these in my lecture videos. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check them out. I also have another channel called Cyber Math, where I do algebra and number theory problems in general. It's cyber with an s. All right, great. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this in more than one way. First method. For my first method, I want to simplify the trigonometric expression on the left-hand side. By using double angle formulas, we are able to simplify this. Now, some people might be thinking, okay, why don't you multiply by the conjugates? Yes, sometimes you do that, especially for proving trigonometric identities. But in this case, I don't think it's going to help. What I mean is multiply by 1 minus sine theta, top and bottom. And from here, you get 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared. And then that cosine squared, one of them, is actually going to cancel out, leaving us with a little uh, different expression. So these two are going to cancel out. We're going to get something like 1 minus sine theta over cosine theta. So we might as well write the problem that way, but I don't think that's an advantage. We're not really gaining anything by doing that. So, but at least we tried, right? You got to try different methods and one of them will hopefully work. So, how do we simplify this by using the double angle formulas? First of all, what are the double angle formulas? Let's talk about those. Double angle formulas are as follows. The most common ones are the sine and cosine, but sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. That is a single formula, but cosine has three formulas. Let me give you all. Cosine squared minus sine squared. This is the main one, by the way. The reason why we have three formulas for cosine 2x is because of the Pythagorean theorem or the formula, which is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if you go ahead and replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, you get 1 minus 2 sine squared for cosine 2x. Or if you replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, you get the third formula, which is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So we have three formulas for cosine 2x. Which one? are we going to use? That's a good question. And you can tell by what? I don't know. I forgot. Oh, by the way, if you wanted to use the formula for cosine, you'll probably use... Anyways, you know what? I think we're going to be able to do this, but we have to do a little bit of something to this. So here's how it goes. We're going to write this down in a different way. I want this to be cosine, not sine. Okay, how can I do that? Easy. By using the co-function identities. What is that? Uh, it means that if you have sine of pi over 2 minus x, that is cosine of x, which means if two angles are complementary, their sum is pi over 2, then this identity holds. And of course, you can switch sine and cosine and it will still work, right? So, which one are we going to use? We're going to replace sine with something, so let's use this one. Replace sine theta with cosine pi over 2 minus x. And the reasoning behind this is to be able to use the double angle formula. And since we have a 1 plus cosine, I could probably use one that will make the 1 cancel out, which is the third one. Okay, so that'll take care of that. But what about the cosine theta? Again, I need to turn it into a sine by using this sine pi over 2 minus theta. So sine and cosine kind of need to be switched. By the way, did I write x? Okay, that was supposed to be theta, not x. I got carried away. Now, here's my expression a little differently, okay? So, here's what we have, and now we can use the following. What is the sine 2x? So this will be considered 2x. If you want, you can first write it as sine 2x divided by 1 plus cosine 2x and then replace sine 2x with 2 sine x cosine x. And at the bottom, you are supposed to use 2 cosine squared x minus 1. The 1s are going to cancel out. The 2s are going to cancel out. The cosine is going to cancel out. Uh-oh, we 
we end up with something super simple, which is tangent x. How easy that is once you do the substitution. But we kind of need to think about what is x. If 2x is pi over 2 minus theta, then x would be half of this, which is pi over 4 minus theta over 2. So that's my x. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So tangent x would be tangent blah, blah, blah. But don't worry about it because we still have to solve the equation. Tangent x is equal to what? I. Remember, we had I on the right hand side, didn't we? Yes. So we, we now can set it equal to I and try to solve for x first. Because if you can solve for x, which is kind of like easier than solving for something like this, then of course we can always back substitute. Make sense? Once you find x, you can find theta. That's what I'm trying to say. How do you solve for this equation? Hmm. Can you think of a triangle with these properties? Like this is angle x, this is i over 1 from Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is i squared plus 1, which is 0. So the hypotenuse is 0. Uh-oh. Cosine would be 1 over 0. Or sine would be i over 0. Undefined, undefined, undefined. Houston, we have a problem. What's that problem? The problem is there is no such angle. Does that make sense? There are no solutions. You could also verify it though by using uh, Euler's formulas. Cosine x can be written as e to the i x plus e to the negative i x divided by 2. Thanks to Euler, we have these formulas. And sine x is e to the i x minus e to the negative i x divided by 2. And then divide sine by cosine. Twos are going to, oh, oops, I forgot the two i, sorry about that. And this comes from e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x, which is known as Euler's formula, which also gives us the most beautiful equation in mathematics. Maybe in another video we can talk about it. The idea is there are no solutions. Since there are no solutions for x, there are no solutions for theta either. And let's go ahead and check. Did I include Wolfram Alpha's result? Probably. Haha. <laughs> yes. Wolfram Alpha says the same. Good job, Wolfram Alpha. And this brings us to the end of this video. Wait a minute. Uh, before I finish, I just wanted to show you something real quick. What would happen if you continued with this? You would be getting something like this. e to the ix minus e to the negative ix divided by 2i. And then flip the other one and kind of plug it in. This is negative. This is i. The 2's cancel out. And you have an i which you can cross multiply by. That gives you i squared, which is negative 1. And then eventually, after you multiply the this one by negative 1, you get negative e to the i x minus e to the negative i x. And then you can go ahead and cancel these out, and this should give you 2 e to the i x equals 0, which is e to the i x equals 0. So x needs to be infinity. Ta-da! Wait a minute. We're not doing limits here. So there are no solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.